Hi, this is Dr. Adelsheimer at Regenex Pittsburgh. And um, thank everybody. I want to thank everybody first and foremost today for joining our uh, live webinar. And um, we're going to be talking about a lot of exciting things that our practice has been doing and how this will uh, hopefully help your companies and hopefully help you all to be interested in a lot of what we're doing. Um, so I, uh, again, want to first and foremost, thank everybody. I'm going to start uh, sharing my screen in a minute. We can go through this presentation. I, I will um, be giving everyone as much time at the end to ask any questions that they may have. Um, again, uh, I will be able to answer all those at length at the end. So. Without further ado, I will start sharing my screen and we can um, start the presentation. Okay, so again, I'm uh, before we get into the bulk of this, I want to reintroduce myself. My name is Dr. Mark Adelsheimer. I'm a physician and I'm board certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation, also in the subspecialty of pain medicine. My practice is Regenex Pittsburgh. I have two physician partners, Dr. Paul Lieber and Dr. Jesse Sally. All three of us are board certified in physical medicine and rehab. And Dr. Sally has additional certification in sports medicine with Dr. Lieber and I being uh, additionally certified in pain management. Anyways, we have been partnered with Regenex now for nine years, and it's been the best thing that ever happened to our practice. And we're really excited to talk to you today about some of the things that Regenex has to offer and what we've been doing and, um, and how we've been helping our patients here in Pittsburgh and how Regenex is helping people around the country. So what is Regenex? And, um, who are we? Uh, Regenix is a company that basically started out of Colorado with Dr. Centeno and Dr. Schultz. Um, they have, were the first practice uh, who started doing orthopedic stem cell work in 2005. But the goal of Regenix is a interventional orthopedics. And we're going to talk about that concept a little bit as we go. Um, so interventional orthopedics is not surgical orthopedics. It is using, it's a new medical specialty where we're using our um, injection techniques to deliver orthobiologics to help improve problems in a non-surgical fashion. So it's a lower risk alternative to surgical procedures. Regenix is a highly selective physician network. There are 60, I think 68 different Regenix providers throughout the country. Our practice here in Pittsburgh was one of the original uh, Regenex providers outside of Colorado. Um, and Regenex has their own uh, propriety protocols that only Regenex physicians can provide. So we are delivering a high quality product that no other practice in the country has the expertise in providing. Every Regenex physician has been trained uh, personally by uh, the doctors in Colorado. We all go out there on a regular basis. We all have uh, weekly and daily meetings and discussions about uh, cases. And um, every, uh, myself, Dr. Lieber, Dr. Sally have each been to Colorado at least 10 times and have worked very closely with the main Regenix network. Um, Regenix is also the world leader in research and development when it comes to orthobiologics, uh, and that particularly means platelet-rich plasma and stem cells. Um, Regenix also has a nationally self-funded employer practice, and that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about for you guys today and how this can help you. So Regenix uh, is the bridge between traditional non-surgical treatment and surgery. So traditional non-surgical treatment has always been physical therapy, medications, chiropractic care, um, maybe some uh, basic steroid injections that uh, most physicians can provide. 
And be before that, it was that that didn't work, you went to surgery. And surgery is often overuse and misuse because there's a lot of things that don't need to be operated on. And we can provide treatment that can help prevent those operations, uh, reduce unnecessary surgery by up to 70%, and very importantly, reduce cost for an individual by 70% uh, also, because interventional orthopedic procedures are significantly less expensive than surgical procedures. So we are, you know, again, not surgical, um, but somewhat significantly more so than the traditional non-surgical treatment. This slide's very busy because it basically shows that we treat all areas of the body, all orthopedic areas of the body. So whether you're talking about the neck, the mid back, the lower back, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, the hip, the knee, the ankle, even fingers and toes, these are all areas that we can treat. Um, there's a lot of different diagnoses on here and we treat all of these diagnoses. Um, almost all of these are things that traditionally have been treated with surgery. And now we have very good treatment options that surgery can pre be prevented again in over 70% of conditions that pr uh, previously always were treated surgically. So again, a busy slide showing that we treat a lot of different problems, basically almost every orthopedic problem. So for almost every condition that someone's gonna go see an orthopedic surgeon for, they can come to see a Regenex physician and undergo a Regenex treatment to help heal this problem. Uh, Regenex has a very high net promoter score. Um, when you're comparing this to uh, other different types of outlets in healthcare, uh, we are significantly higher than almost all uh, areas. So Regenix is really well thought of out there in the community. Uh, how did Regenix earn this score? Well, it's because we have had very good feedback from people that have had our treatments. Um, we have made significant improvements in people's quality of life, and that's really what it's all about. People that have, had, that have been injured and have, may have been looking at a major surgery, significantly time off of work or significant impact on their lives, have had a Regenex procedure and have not had to undergo that surgery and more importantly, have improved the quality of their life and in a quick and timely fashion. So this is uh, some real employee quotes of things that um, our patients have provided after undergoing a Regenex procedure. Um, so again, we're comparing a lot of what we do to surgery and for good reason. And this is what uh, one of the main reasons is the evidence for traditional orthopedic surgery is poor. There has been a lot, and this was a direct quote from the British Medical Journal saying it's scandalously poor the evidence for traditional orthopedic surgery. Only 20% of procedures are estimated to be supported by at least one randomized controlled trial. So there, it's been estimated that 53% of surgery in the United States are really ineffective and there's no data to support these being done. So again, we're comparing our treatments to what's out there in the medical literature comparing data. And again, the data for orthopedic surgery is very poor. Um, so do these surgeries work? And why is so much money being spent on so many surgeries out there that probably do not work? Um, and they also have significant increased uh, side effects, including serious complications, which can include heart attack, stroke, and even death. Um, but this lists a lot of very common surgeries that are being done in the community that do not need to be done um, in, in, and can be replaced with orthobiologics, what we're talking about today. And again, the amount of money that's being spent on these surgeries on a yearly basis is astronomical. Uh, the amount of money that would be spent on a Regenex provider is you know, minuscule when compared to the amount that's being spent right now on orthopedic surgery. So I mentioned the word interventional orthopedics and comparing this to surgery, um, just to kind of touch base on that once again, 
What we're talking about are needle-based procedures. We don't use scalpels. We stick needles in people, that's it. So with a needle, you are not going to run the risk that you do when you're cutting people open. We have never had a significant infection. The risk of a blood clot or heart attack or stroke is almost minuscule. In fact, we've never had a significant problem from any of those issues. Um, we are also, so interventional orthopedics is significantly less invasive than surgery and it enables us to use our orthobiologics to repair orthopedic problems, whether that problem is bone, tendon, cartilage, ligament, muscle. We can deliver your own orthobiological product to help heal these problems. It's very important when using orthobiologics that you use precise image guided placement. Every single Regenex provider has highly skilled trained technique to do this, meaning we're, we use musculoskeletal ultrasound and fluoroscopy, which is x-ray, to make sure that our needles are in the exact location. So for instance, if someone has a torn rotator cuff, we don't just blindly shove a needle into their shoulder and hope we're somewhere near the area. We're using an ultrasound machine, watching it, guiding it, seeing the tear, verifying that we're in the tear, placing the orthobiologic, be it uh, stem cell, bone marrow concentrate, uh, platelet-rich plasma, directly into the correct area. This is very precision-based, and again, very few physicians have the ability and the skills to do these type of procedures. As I mentioned earlier, uh, interventional orthopedics has significantly lower risk. It's not even comparable when you're talking about surgery. So what are orthobiologics? Again, I've, I've mentioned these quickly, uh, but these are different substances used to treat bone, muscle, cartilage, tendon, and ligament. And basically the two main substances that we're using are blood platelets and bone marrow concentrate. Bone marrow concentrate are where adult live stem cells live. So we're talking about autologous, uh, live stem cells in bone marrow concentrate. Uh, platelets are blood cells. So we use platelets as a standalone procedure for a lot of conditions that we treat, especially milder conditions. For instance, anything, any type of tendinitis. So someone with, for instance, rotator cuff tendinitis, uh, you know, say a golfer's elbow or tennis elbow, also known as epicondylitis. Um, we use platelets for things like carpal tunnel syndrome. We use platelets for uh, entrapped spinal nerves um, as a standalone treatment. Um, when we go to bone marrow concentrate, it is for more advanced problems. For instance, instead of just tendonitis of that rotator cuff, if you have a tear in that rotator cuff, we can place bone marrow concentrate, which again is rich with stem cells into that tear and those cells have the ability to heal that tear. And I have a, you know, the same is true for other ligaments and parts of the body. I have a picture of, a, of an ACL that I'll show you in a minute that was uh, done with bone marrow concentrated stem cells. So again, orthobiologics are your cells or the patient's own cells. It's really important to stress that autologous, meaning they are their cells. There's no risk for um, rejection when using somebody's own cells. There are other people that are doing these quote stem cell procedures using other people's cells or using products that may come from a pregnant woman like uh, amniotic fluid or cord blood. There has no data to support any of these um, Procedures, the FDA is looking at these procedures, they're cracking down on them, knowing that they're really fraud based and not something that here at Regenix we look at and use at all. So again, we're using uh, patients own cells to heal their own problems. So from a patient experience, the first thing that we're gonna start with is a comprehensive evaluation. And in our practice, Dr. Lieber, Dr. Sally, and I are available in one of our five office locations to spend an entire hour with a new consult. 
Um, that hour will include a comprehensive physical uh, history and physical examination. It will also include an ultrasound examination. That's a picture of an ultrasound machine, meaning that we wheel that directly into the room. And if someone has a knee problem or a shoulder problem or an elbow or wrist, we can look at it live right there and say, hey, this is what's going on. Um, in addition, we'll review whatever diagnostic studies uh, a patient will have prior to coming. And that might include an X-ray, an, an MRI, a CAT scan, an EMG, or any other uh, study that was done beforehand. We'll also review any prior treatments that the patients had in the past. Most of our patients have, have tried things that have failed. Maybe they've tried cortisone shots, or they've tried Synvisc, or they've tried physical therapy or chiropractic treatment. A lot of our patients have had prior surgeries. We want to know exactly what's going on uh, with all of these areas. And after we do an entire comprehensive evaluation with the patient, we will give them a candidacy review, meaning we will tell them whether or not we can help them with our experience. So we will be very honest with the patient saying either they are a good, a fair, a poor, or not a candidate for our treatment that we might be able to offer to them. We're not always going to offer an orthobiologic treatment for every patient that we see. That is one of the tools in our armamentarium. If they haven't tried some traditional treatments that we think might be indicated, like physical therapy or possibly chiropractor or other treatments, we might want to start with that before we get into using orthobiologics. So again, we're gonna give you a, give your patients a comprehensive evaluation and an honest opinion. And that's the best that I can do for all of my patients. I tell everybody you know, upfront and honestly whether or not I can help them, what their chance of recovery is um, with our procedures. There are certain things that we can't treat. Um, you know, again, there are still, I'm not saying that everything we, everything done in the orthopedic surgery arena can be replaced with orthobiologics. There's times that surgery is still necessary. If I think somebody needs to see a surgeon, I will let them know this isn't something we treat, you need to see a surgeon. But again, 70% of what's being done now in the surgical arena, we can treat with orthobiologics. So, you know, it's, highly recommended that a patient just come to see myself, Dr. Lieber, Dr. Sally, or another Regenex provider to get a comprehensive evaluation um, and a, an honest opinion as to what their problem is and how we can potentially help them. So I'm gonna walk through what's involved with a stem cell procedure, uh, since this is, or a bone marrow concentrate with stem cell procedure because this is the, the most involved procedure that we do. So as I mentioned, uh, first we'll do a comprehensive history and physical examination and candidacy review, go over that with the patient. And if the patient says, yes, um, I do wanna proceed with, for instance, for the, with the bone marrow concentrate stem cell procedure, this is what's involved with it. And it's a three-step process. And I'm gonna go through what's involved uh, for the patients on each step. Again, emphasizing that every needle we stick into somebody is done with guidance, ultrasound or x-ray. We are never blindly shoving needles in and hoping we hit the right spot. We are looking with our ultrasound machine down a probe, making sure the needle is in the correct location. And that's for the pre-injection, the uh, bone marrow concentrate injection and the post-injection. So the pre-injection, again, what this slide is about is our way of getting the area prepared for the bone marrow concentrate stem cell procedure that will come next. So this is done with a solution we have on our shelf. It's called prolotherapy. Most people have never heard of prolotherapy. In fact, most physicians have never heard of prolotherapy. It's actually been around for about 50 years and we've actually been doing it here in Pittsburgh for 20 years. Um, but it's been replaced with orthobiologics because orthobiologics um, are, do a better job in the long run than just doing prolotherapy by itself. However, prolotherapy as a pre-injection gets a joint ready for stem cells, so it tills the soil. We place prolotherapy solution into the joint, into the ligament, into the tendon that we're treating, and it will stimulate an, an inflammatory response, so when we do the 
second step of the procedure, it works better. Again, that's why the analogy of tilling the soil before we plant your seeds. The second injection is the seeds. That's the stem cell injection. Okay, this is usually done three to four days after the prolotherapy or pre-injection. This does involve a bone marrow aspirin. Um, I have this discussion with my patients every day about taking their bone marrow. I personally have done well over a thousand of these procedures and our practice has done in excess of 3000 of these. It is not a big deal. Um, basically what's done with a bone marrow aspirin is the patient will feel a pinch and burn. It's also done in the, in the um, pelvis, which is the largest bone in the body. So it's in the lower back, but we're not going to the spine and we're not going to the hip. The pelvic bone is the biggest bone in the body. It's very easy to get a needle onto that bone and very easy to get a needle into the bone. So basically what the patient will feel is a pinch and a burn from numbing the skin. Then we put a, a longer needle down to the bone and we numb up the entire bone. Once that bone is numb, they do not feel the needle going into the bone. In order to get the needle under the bone, we actually have a small drill, which works great. It makes it much easier for both me and for my patient because we're able to use a really skinny needle that we put at the end of that drill and it just kind of goes right in. I tell my patients it's like drilling into drywall. Very easy. There's a little loss of resistance once you get in there, very easy to feel, and then you know you're inside the bone. Inside the bone is where bone marrow lies. So we're gonna we're gonna aspirate, we're gonna pull out or suck out the bone marrow from inside the pelvic bone. Um, if our patients are nervous about that part of the procedure, we can give them some medication that would kind of relax them, something like Valium or Ativan. Um, we also have some laughing gas here in our practice that we can give to them to kind of put them in la-la land if they're concerned or nervous about that part of the procedure. But to tell you the truth, most of my patients, 80%, do it just with the local anesthetic because that's all that's necessary. We've never used general anesthesia to do a bone marrow aspirate because it is not necessary. We then take the patient's bone marrow to our lab. Our lab is right here in our office, is a Regenex certified lab that's been placed uh, nine years ago by Regenex. It takes my lab processor uh, about an hour and a half or so to process bone marrow because bone marrow is about 90% other cells and about 10% stem cells, maybe five to 10%. That's all we want is that five to 10%. During the time that the uh, bone marrow is in the lab. My patients, we give them a gift certificate for breakfast or lunch. They leave, they go out, they get something to eat. They're fine. They come back. And that same day, we're going to re-inject the stem cells into the area that we're treating. So be it the shoulder, the knee, the hip, the, the spine, or wherever else we're treating. We need to do it that same day. We do that for two reasons. Number one, the stem cells are alive and we want to put them right back in when they're alive. And number two, if you were to keep it overnight, it is no longer an FDA approved procedure. So we never do that. Every one of those uh, re-injections happens the same day. So that's the middle day of a stem cell injection. Uh, the third day or the third part of the procedure is a way of fertilizing those stem cells. Um, and that's done with platelet-rich plasma. So on that, Third injection, they would come in a little beforehand. We're gonna draw some blood because platelets are a blood cell. We take the blood to our lab. They're gonna process it, isolate pure platelets. And again, under ultrasound or possibly x-ray guidance, we're going to place those platelets into the joint. Why do we put platelets in after the stem cells? Is because platelets, again, act like a fertilizer or a stimulant to stem cells. They make them work better. This is a Regenex propriety procedure. Regenex is the only one who has the three-step process. And the reason we do this is because this is what leads to the best patient outcome. So again, we will go through, every stem cell procedure we do involves these three steps. After the third step of these uh, procedure, the patient can go back to normal function. We then will send them to physical therapy and instruct them in appropriate exercises so they can have the improvement that they're looking for. I do emphasize with all my patients that this is not the quick fix that a steroid injection is. This is designed for permanent long-term healing. 
So it does take a little while for people to get better. However, they're no worse for their wear after this third step of the procedure, meaning when they're done with this third step, they are ready to return to work. They're ready to return to activity. They're just, it just has to take time for the stem cells to make that joint significantly better. So by time, I mean one to three months. And that's when they're getting into an active rehabilitation program that we are overseeing. Again, we generally start with physical therapy and then really teaching a patient the correct exercises they do on their own. So long-term improvement can take three to six months, but they are right back to their baseline within a few days. So again, when you're looking at time off of work, it may be two to three days, that's it. Whereas surgery, you're talking often two to three months, maybe sometimes even more if complications arise. First and foremost, this is a safe procedure. Everything we do is safety first. And I emphasize that with everybody. All we are doing is taking some cells from one part of their body and moving it from that part of their body to a different part of their body. Everything we do is guided. And I've emphasized that several times, meaning we're never blindly sticking needles in and hoping we hit the right spot. Everything we do is sterile. We've never had an infection for the reason being that we follow sterile techniques and we're also just using needles and we're doing it in a sterile environment. So first and foremost, this is a safe procedure and Regenix has the largest safety study published on the usage of mesenchymal stem cells for orthopedic conditions. We all, so then the next question is, does it work? Well, we have a lot of we have all of our data available online showing efficacy uh, for these procedures. And this is broken down by clinic, even broken down by provider. So if you wanna see if my procedures, Dr. Adelsheimer's procedures work, go in there, you can click Regenex Pittsburgh, you can click under me, you can see all the procedures that I've done, the outcomes for every single one of my patients. Um, and that's broken down throughout all Regenex providers in the country. All of our data is available, it's online. Highly recommend people look at this, but the bottom line is the outcomes speak for themselves. So for most of the conditions that we're treating, the outcomes are very good. By very good, we're talking about functional long-term benefit for the patient, meaning ability to walk, ability to exercise, ability to play sports, to work, to have long-term benefit that they may have had with surgery, but they're able to get this in a short and timely fashion and not undergoing the major surgery with the risk that they would have had. And again, our, our results are published. We've had multiple uh, studies out there. Regenix has been doing this for 15 years and all of our data is available. Also, all of the data that we do here in Pittsburgh gets pulled into the national database of Regenex. As I mentioned, we are a national uh, company. You can see on, on the right that we're seeing patients from all over the country. So all of the patients that we're doing are put into the national database. So which gives it a lot more bite when you're looking at data. Also, uh, Regenex is running some randomized control trials. Uh, there is a randomized control trial on knees, ver comparing knee replacement versus stem cell procedures for a knee that has very good outcomes so far. There's a very uh, good randomized control trials on ACLs. And I was, as I'm kind of teased earlier, I do have a picture of an ACL that we treated pre and post stem cell that had complete resolution in a tear. So uh, this is a very viable alternative to an ACL tear, which is really kind of revolutionary in medicine because people always felt, hey, I tore my ACL, that surgery, no other option. Same is true with rotator cuff tears. These can absolutely be identified by us and treated for the most part. I'm not saying every ACL or every rotator cuff tear can be healed with orthobiologics, but 70% of them can be. Um, this is the uh, three month MRI result, pre and post stem cell on an ACL tear. Uh, I know the uh, audience isn't all radiologists, but you can uh, see the difference when you're looking at the two arrows, uh, both pre on the left and post on the right, uh, showing that, that nice thick black line. 
uh, is a healed ACL. Um, and this is what a healthy ACL should look like and what this patient's ACL looks like three months after a stem cell procedure for a torn ACL. We can also evaluate patients electronically. With uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we've been doing a lot of this in our practice, uh, just letting people know that this is an opportunity, um, especially for people coming from a distance. We do a lot of telemedicine visits uh, to help uh, you know, eliminate that first visit. Um, they can send us diagnostic studies such as MRIs or x-rays or uh, anything else that they may have. We can do a face-to-face -face discussion on uh, video and uh, walk through a detailed um, evaluation. So, you know, obviously we wanna see them before we do the procedure and we do that, but we do have a whole telemedicine process in place and this works really well. Um, and we've been doing this basically since COVID uh, started a year ago. So what are employees saying about um, Regenex, uh, all of our feedback has been nothing but positive. They're reporting significantly cost savings. Their patients are significantly happier. They have, a lot of these patients didn't know they had these options. They're finding out about these. They're having great outcomes. They're telling their coworkers. We're starting to see that snowball effect happen for a lot of the companies that we, that are covering this, meaning that one, one employee will have a problem, they'll, talk, they'll have a procedure with us, they'll talk to a coworker or a colleague, and they'll say, hey, yeah, my shoulder hurts too, maybe I should go see these guys. And, it's, uh, and you know, we are having significant cost savings for the employers who have uh, signed on to this. So what are the next steps? Um, again, I'm the doctor here, I'm not the, uh, person to uh, talk to you all about how to get this signed on with, have your company sign on with Regenex, but we do have a dedicated uh, education team. That's their uh, number for a phone, about, phone call, 866-964-0801. They're going to be very familiar with your current benefits. They'll be able to help uh, screen for candidacy. Um, you know, we can walk every patient through this problem and they can provide blueprints um, to help um, get people involved. So again, I wanna thank everybody for joining um, this presentation today. I uh, can open this up to discussion and questions. Um, you know, I'm really enthusiastic about everything that Regenex has done. It's revolutionized my practice of medicine it's made a huge difference for patients. In the past, I was a traditional pain doctor who did a lot of steroid shots and I gave people short-term benefit and never provided significant long-term relief. Now I'm making a significant difference in people's quality of life and it's been a great relationship. And I'm, again, in, in, incredibly enthusiastic about being part of Regenex. So again, I want to thank everyone for joining me and I'll open it up to any questions that people may have. Okay, I guess I, I got back to the main screen here. I'm not, you know, not great at Zoom. I haven't done a ton of these, but I, I'm not seeing any questions coming over. Um, anybody can click in the question answer um, 
and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Again, there's a lot of information available on our website, a lot of information available by calling uh, the number that I uh, told everybody about uh, previously. Um, you know, I know when I talk to my patients, some of the common questions that I'm asked, I can kind of answer. Uh, First and foremost, you know, if this does work, how long is it going to last? And that's a great question. And that is something that um, our Regenex uh, data is helping us to answer because we do have great data now on uh, five-year outcomes showing that people that got better at six months maintain that for at least five years. Um, we don't have 10-year data out there yet because it um, most of these procedures haven't been done that long, but we know it's lasting at least five years and possibly even more. Um, so that's really exciting to share. Uh, for a lot of conditions, you know, this can be a cure. I meant, you know, the ACL that we talked about that I showed you the picture of, that's something that somebody should not uh, need further treatment on ever again. A, a question that often comes up is, can I, if I get a good outcome, can I retreat an area down the road? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. So say you have severe arthritis of a knee and you want to prevent a knee replacement and you undergo a stem cell procedure and you feel significantly better, but five years later, it starts to get a little worse. There's options to look at um, in terms of retreatment, not necessarily requiring a full stem cell procedure. We will often do a booster injection with platelets, which can make a nice difference for folks down the road. Um, so again, um, there's a, we, we have a lot of different options for patients who you know, may have improvement, but you know, may hit some bumps or uh, problems down the road for them. People also ask me all the time, can they get both knees done if they have arthritis at the same time? And the answer to that question is no. And the reason why the answer is no, as I mentioned, when we do a stem cell procedure, uh, we get bone marrow out and there's only so much bone marrow that you can safely take at one time. If you take half of those stem cells and put them in one knee and half in another knee, you're not gonna get the complete res resolution that you would get if uh, you did a full stem cell procedure in one knee and then later on did a full stem cell procedure in the other knee. You want to wait at least three months in between procedures because you got to give the body time to replenish all the bone marrow that you took out. So a lot of patients do have two bad knees and are looking at possibly getting both of them replaced. What we'll do in that situation is we'll do the more involved knee first and then wait anywhere from three to six months to look at the other knee uh, for further treatment. If we did both at the same time, the outcome would not be as successful. So that's why we uh, steer patients away from that. Um, I talked a lot about safety, about image guidance. You know, I think a lot of our patients out there are comparing what we do to uh, other clinics. And again, um, it's buyer beware out there. Unfortunately, uh, stem cells, um, and I, I put the quotations because most of what they're using are not stem cells it's still the wild west to some degree. Um, the FDA is a little bit slow in getting in here and, and regulating it like they should be. Um, but again, every procedure that we do is safe, FDA compliant, whereas uh, there are other providers out there that are not. And it's really important to uh, appreciate that and know the difference because the outcomes are gonna be significantly better. Nobody else has the data to support it. Nobody else has the training, the technology, the laboratory, et cetera. So again, um, I feel very privileged to be part of the Regenex network and being able to provide these services to your patients. So seeing that there are still no more questions, I will end today's webinar. And once again, I wanna thank everybody for joining me today and uh, have a great day. Take care, bye-bye.